Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carl Ringgold. I am a project development lead here at the Build America Bureau, working with Sam Beydoun on the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator Demonstration Program. And this video will talk about the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator Demonstration Program and what you can do as an applicant to submit a strong application. So this flowchart shows how the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator applications are reviewed and selected. So from application intake, there is a eligibility check and categorization verification. There's then a criteria evaluation or assessment, and you can see what all of those criteria are below. There are 11 of them. Once that evaluation criteria is assessed, the review team submits their findings or recommendations to our executive director, who in turn presents those recommendations to the Secretary of Transportation, and the Secretary makes a final decision about award. So here you can see what the evaluation criteria are. So first, reviewers determine eligibility during the intake phase, and eligibility includes being a U.S. public entity. Some examples of that are states, multi-state, multi-state jurisdictional groups, municipalities, counties, special purpose districts, port authorities, MPOs, regional transportation commissions, et cetera. Partnerships. Applications will be accepted from a partnership between one or more eligible applicants and another U.S. party, such as a private entity, a consulting firm, an engineering firm, et cetera. Domestic requirement. All regional infrastructure accelerator application parties, their entire jurisdictions, and all proposed projects must be located solely in the United States and its territories. And lastly, proposed projects and project sponsors must meet the eligibility requirements for Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act, TIFIA, and the Railroad Rehabilitation and Improvement Financing, RIF, Credit Assistance. And more information on those two programs can be found on our website. So here you can see the evaluation criteria. Once an applicant is deemed eligible as a result of the intake phase, the review team will evaluate the application according to the 11 criteria established in Section E of the NOFO that you also saw on that flow chart. Proposals are given a qualitative rating, strong, moderate, or marginal, based on the goals of the program. No criterion is rated above another. So let's break down criterion. First, demonstrated experience and expertise. Does this organization, does this applicant possess the ability to evaluate and promote innovative financing methods for local projects, including the use of TIFIA and RIF and other federal assistance programs where applicable? Does it possess the ability to provide technical assistance on best practices with respect to financing projects? Is there experience in increasing transparency with respect to infrastructure project analysis, using innovative financing for public infrastructure projects? Is there experience in deploying pre-development capital programs that are designed to facilitate the creation of a pipeline of infrastructure projects that are available for uh, investment? Is there a history of successfully bundling smaller scale and rural projects into a larger proposal? Is there demonstrated success in reducing transaction costs for public project sponsors? And can the applicant demonstrate the capacity to accelerate projects eligible for the TIFIA credit assistance program? And so as many of these boxes as you can check, the better. Partnerships. Can the applicant demonstrate strong collaboration among a broad range of stakeholders in the proposed geographic area of the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator? Does the applicant work with multiple partners, rather, in project development, funding, financing, and delivery? Lastly, the ability to work quickly and effectively to develop projects by having the support of members and working across jurisdictions. So are there strong partnerships that you can demonstrate? Regional viability. The application will be evaluated on the proposed region geographically, organizationally, and functionally, as well as its jurisdictional relevance. And evaluators will consider the geographic makeup of the proposed RIA and the transportation needs of the region. Business model. This will assess the thoroughness, viability, and efficiency that the application can establish a regional infrastructure accelerator commence operations, and deliver project-specific outcomes. So consider the effort, costs, and actions necessary to initially establish the proposed regional infrastructure accelerator, including workspaces, fixed and variable costs, staffing, development of relationships necessary to function effectively in your proposed region, and then consider how the proposed regional infrastructure accelerator will operate 
once established, including cost, organization, efficiency, the availability of technical expertise and resources needed to accelerate project delivery, a work plan, as well as the time required to achieve operational status. So how long is it going to take to establish the RIA? And then once established, what will it take to operate? Pipeline. This will consider the proposed pipeline of projects and assess whether and to what extent they are likely to be eligible projects and appropriate for development activities as set forth in the NOFO. The proposed pipeline must include one or more projects likely to be eligible for TIFIA credit assistance. And the evaluators will consider the number of eligible projects in the pipeline, the degree of local and regional support for the projects, the project status and timeline as they relate to the likelihood that the regional infrastructure accelerator can impact the project during the performance period. They will assess the degree to which the skills and experience of the applicants are appropriate for the proposed projects and it will evaluate the viability and proposed approach that the application has developed for attracting new projects into the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator's pipeline. So how does the Regional Infrastructure propose to assist and monitor the development of those projects? Readiness. This section will consider the extent to which the proposed Regional Infrastructure Accelerator is prepared to commence operations and begin achieving project-specific results. This ties very closely to the business model availability of facilities and equipment necessary to function, existing governance structure as compared to proposed future structure, the ability of existing relationships to rapidly deliver results. And this will assess the viability of the proposed budget as it relates to the establishment and successful operations of the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator as proposed. It will also determine the likelihood that proposed milestones will be subject to delay and or cost overruns. Value. This section will evaluate the relative value of the proposal to individual projects and the taxpayer, including but not limited to the number of projects likely to be measurably accelerated as a result of the proposed technical assistance of the Regional Infrastructure Accelerator and the number of projects reasonably expected to receive Bureau financing and the asset classes most prevalent in the proposed project portfolio. And it will also consider the applicant's proposed performance targets, how they compare to the overall proposed cost of the RIA. Rural assistance, where applicable, the evaluators will look at the degree to which the proposal can support individual rural project sponsors. They'll consider opportunities proposed to overcome common barriers to use in TIFIA and RIF credit assistance and other innovative finance methods for rural project sponsors, such as project size or type financial or institutional capabilities or other issues. They will also consider how the activities proposed will address those challenges, regardless of the geographic location of those activities. So this can include delivering innovative technical assistance and leveraging DOT routes initiatives to provide user-friendly information and other assistance to rural project sponsors. So it doesn't necessarily have to be hands-on. This sort of assistance could function in a virtual technical assistance sort of manner, but how will these activities address some of the challenges that rural sponsors have? Self-sustainability. This will consider whether and to what extent the proposed regional infrastructure accelerator will achieve self-sustainability during the program's effective period of receipt of federal funding. If the proposed regional infrastructure accelerator will not achieve self-sustainability, the evaluators will look at the extent to which the termination of the RIA might deliver long-term benefits as the results of the projects being delivered during the funding period. So if self-sustainability is not the goal, how impactful are the projects in your pipeline? Risk. This will assess the risk to successful implementation and operation of the proposed RIA, including the degree to which Proposed mitigation activities might address or offset those risks. It will assess the practicality of proposed mitigation activities in terms of cost, complexity, and time required to implement the actions. Transformative projects. This will assess the ability to foster a safe transportation system, the extent to which the project considers climate change and environmental justice in project planning and delivery, and the extent to which it increases equity. And equity can include increases in transportation choices, expansion of access to essential services, proving rather connectivity to jobs, healthcare, and other critical destinations, and proactively addressing racial equity and barriers to opportunity. Deploy innovative technologies and practices that improve safety, environmental sustainability, quality of life, or a state of good repair, 
using either innovative financing methods, project delivery, or, or technology. And lastly, maintaining and upgrading existing transportation systems are all examples of transformative projects. So those are the 11 assessment criteria. Again, you will, you will receive a qualitative rating in each, all equal in weight. And that rating will be strong, moderate, or marginal. Now, in, in terms of the overall assessment, the application would receive an overall assessment of high, medium, or low. And this will ultimately reflect how well the proposal meets the goals of, of the program. A high rating is a rating that receives a strong rating in at least six of the 11 criteria. Medium would receive a rating of moderate for a combination of strong and moderate in at least six of the criteria. And low would receive five or more marginal ratings. If there are any questions, I would much prefer being contacted through email just for the purpose of record keeping and being able to take good notes. My email is carl.ringold at dot.gov. And if there are any questions about anything that I just presented as it relates to the application criteria and how to put forth a strong application, uh, please feel free to contact me. Thank you again for watching this overview of the Regional Infrastructure Accelerators Demonstration Program Application Criteria. The next module will focus on how to prepare the application and will be hosted by my colleague, Sam Beydoun.